Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Rita Yonushaite. Rita is Advocacy Coordinator at EU Disinfo Lab, an independent non-profit organization focused on tackling disinformation campaigns targeting the EU, its member states, core institutions, and core values. Previously, Rita worked at the European Youth Forum as Policy and Advocacy Manager, and prior to that, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Lithuania. Okay, Rita, you know about your challenge, telling us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Thank you very much. I uh, appreciate the opportunity to be able um, to come and talk to you about the European Media Freedom Act and more specifically about Article 17, the deals of content of media service providers on very large online uh, platforms. I would like to start with the fact that the Commission proposal regarding Article 17 in the Media Freedom Act in the first place is trying to solve a problem that actually does not exist. There is no evidence to confirm that over removal of media content is a systemic problem that needs this measure. Primarily, what we are seeing are actually separate instances that can be addressed with existing tools already in the DSA. Really, the question is, how many times have you seen um, you know, media such as Lumon being taken down by social media platforms? But on the other hand, how many times have you seen this information and other harmful content coming from actors claiming to be media, but not being moderated by social media platforms? That's the real question. Article 17 is also based on the definition of the media service provider. But according to the European Media Freedom Act draft, anyone can be a media service provider. Imagine that with my blog post that I'm running every day, I say that I'm aiming to entertain people with my ideas. And in fact, I'm actually making editorial decisions and I could be considered as a media service provider very easily. Imagine all the bad actors now being able to benefit from it. Article 17 in the Media Freedom Act at best is redundant, as many things that it puts forward have been already agreed and actually better defined in the DSA, including specific considerations to account for media content online. In addition to user redress mechanisms that are also introduced in the DSA, including the media that they can employ, so any possible issues are addressed without any undue delay. DSA has all that. Worse, in fact, Article 17 in the Media Freedom Act would create a system where anyone declaring to be a media on a very large online platform would be able to benefit from this so-called privilege treatment to receive a statement of reasons prior their content is being moderated and to be entitled to what is called an amicable solution. The system that is prone to abuse by bad actors and also the system that will enable state-controlled media that spreads disinformation and propaganda. The privileged treatment introduced in the Media Freedom Act is also hard to implement in practice and will very likely result in a situation where very large online, pl online platforms will actually refrain from content moderation on media at all. Any media, actually. To make matters even worse, we were saying for months as a UDIS Info Lab that this Article 17 in the European Media Freedom Act will open the door for the media exemption for those who don't necessarily know the term, the measure that would legally prohibit uh, platforms to do content moderation on media content to come back. The one that was actually already rejected in the DSA and the one that would turn Europe into a hub for disinformation and other harmful content. We are already seeing that happening in the institutions. The Council of the EU has put forward a compromise proposal that introduced a waiting period before a blob can do content moderation of a piece of content coming from a media to give an opportunity to the media service provider, as they say, to you know, uh, challenge this decision within an appropriate period of time. 
basically this is one-on-one -on -one language of the media exemption that we had in the DSA. European Parliament currently seems to be going even further than that. In the draft in IMCO committee opinion, it is calling to introduce a 48-hour stay-up obligation until the media service provider replies to a very large online platform. The very fact how quickly media content or uh, that carries this information specifically, for example, um, goes online, how quickly it actually spreads is actually not being accounted for. The draft opinion is also suggesting removing any references to systemic risks and the DSA, including this information. And even worse, it's also calling that during that period of time, you wouldn't be able to do any content labeling. That would include fact checking. It's very interesting to see on one hand, institutions calling to provide more resources for fact checking, and on the other hand, not allowing to do that work. This is, this is a clear contradiction. The thing is, if these attempts succeed, Article 17 in the Media Freedom Act could be used to prevent effective enforcement of the DSA. The platforms could then very easily to, to justify their non-compliance with the DSA by provisions in the Media Freedom Act, as this is a sector-specific regulation and directly apply to media questions. Actually, Article 17 in the European Media Freedom Act is nothing more than another attempt to bring a very, very bad idea back to life. Again, the one that was already rejected in the DSA, both by the, by the Council and by the European Parliament, the media exemption. This is, for the policymakers, this is a choice between a non-existent issue of media content over moderation and actually ensuring that users are safe online by deleting this Article 17 altogether and focusing on the DSA um, effective implementation and enforcement. Thank you, Rita. So um, to, to sum it up, um, not much evidence that this is a systemic problem that needs uh, an article in the European Media Freedom Act in the sense of not uh, that many removals of content coming from media, or at least no evidence that was shown in either the impact assessment or uh, from stakeholders. Um, the fact that the slippery slope uh, from a media privilege to a media exemption that your organization and other civil society organizations warned about, um, that slope is there. It's happening in the Council, it's happening in the European Parliament. Uh, and so we are looking at the second edition uh, of a media exemption after the first edition was um, uh, not accepted during the Digital Services Act uh, negotiations. So interesting times ahead, uh, certainly for you who are trying to fight uh, and are successfully uh, fighting uh, disinformation uh, because of the obvious conflict and, and the risk of bad actors abusing this loophole. And let's hope that the European Parliament and the Council uh, listen to your concerns and that we get either a fixed Article 17 or uh, no Article 17. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rita. Have a great day. Thank you very much. That's what many civil society organizations are calling for, and we do hope that policymakers will be able to hear us. Yes, let's, let's hope so.